Let's talk about age standardization and age adjustment. This is easy, stick with me. My name is Greg Martin. At the end of this video, I promise you, you are going to understand this. Now, let's imagine that we've got a population of about 5 million people. Of those 5 million people, 90,000 of them die of some kind of disease, let's say cancer. The mortality rate is the proportion of that population that die, so in this case, 90,000 people over 5 million people, and it's convention to times that by 1,000 and then report the number as deaths per 1,000 population. So in this case, it's 18 deaths per 1,000 population, and we call that the crude mortality rate. Now the question is, can we simply compare the crude mortality rate of one population to another? And the answer is no, not if they have different population structures. And let me illustrate the problem for you. Let's divide the population into age bands. The green bars represent the size of the population in each age strata. The gray bars are the proportion of that group that die because of the disease that we're interested in. Now remember that we said that mortality rate is deaths per population or the number of deaths divided by the population size. So it stands to reason then that the population size times the proportion of the people who die in that population, the mortality, will give you the number of deaths, right? Of course it's right. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Let's keep going. So 700,000 people over the age of 85 times the proportion that die in that age group, 0.064, gives you 45,000 deaths in that age group. And of course we can do that for all of the age bands. In this example, we've got a crude mortality rate of 18 deaths per thousand population. Now let's see what happens if we change just the age structure of the population. Hang on, what's going on here? Now we've got a crude mortality rate of about a third of that, six deaths per thousand population. And all we've done is changed the age structure. In these two examples, the mortality rate in each age band has stayed exactly the same. And the lesson here is that age is a confounding factor, right? You cannot compare the crude mortality rate of two populations that have got different age structures. So what can we do to fix this? Well, I'm glad you asked. There are two strategies. There's what we call direct and what we call indirect age standardization. This is not complicated. Stick with me. I promise you, you're going to understand this. Giddy up. Right, we're going to start with indirect age standardization. Let's imagine that we're looking at a country. Maybe it's a country like Ireland. And this is a population pyramid where men are represented in blue, women are represented in pink for each age strata. Now, Again, of course, the gray is the proportion of the people in each age strata that die. That's our mortality rate. And again, we've got a population size. We've got a mortality rate in Ireland, and we've got a number of deaths, right, for each age strata. With me? Of course you are with me. Let's keep going. We start off by noting the actual number of deaths in Ireland, the total number of deaths. And we want to know if that number is bigger or smaller than the number of deaths that you'd expect if Ireland had the same mortality rate as Europe as a whole. So let's remove the Irish mortality rates and the deaths, and let's drop in a standard population mortality rate, in this case, that for Europe. And then let's calculate the number of deaths that we'd see in each age strata and add them up, right? And this gives us the total number of deaths that we'd expect to see if it were the case that Ireland had a mortality rate the same as the whole of Europe. And we can see just by looking at those two numbers that Ireland has more deaths than you would expect to see if it had the European mortality rate applied to the Irish population age structure. And we can look at the ratio of the actual over expected deaths, and this is called the standardized mortality ratio or SMR. And in this case, the SMR is 1.094. Now, if it was exactly one, that would mean that the actual and the expected deaths were exactly the same, right? The fact that it's more than one means that the age adjusted mortality rate in Ireland is higher than for Europe as a whole. And of course, if it was less than one, then Ireland would have an age adjusted mortality rate lower than for the whole of Europe. And of course, we can apply the same technique to other European countries and compare their SMRs to see who is doing better. You got it? Of course you've got it. Let's keep going. Boom shakalaka. Okay, until now we've been talking about indirect age standardization. And to do that, just take note of the fact that we left the population structure alone and we dropped in a standard mortality rate and did the calculation and worked out sort of the expected deaths. Let's now look at direct age standardization. Here we're gonna do something slightly differently. So just take careful note. Now we're going to compare the mortality rates of single and married men. Super duper interesting. This time, instead of substituting in a standard mortality rate, we're gonna keep the mortality rates of the two populations that we're comparing 
and we're going to drop in a standard population structure instead. Let's take a look at how to do that. And before we carry on, a big thank you to the University of Limerick for supporting the creation of this video. The University of Limerick are offering an MSc program in public health which is absolutely world class. I actually think it's one of the best master's level public health degrees that you can get anywhere on planet Earth. The program they've put together has been very specifically and carefully designed to prepare the graduates for work in the public health and the global health space. Now it's a new program but it's very quickly getting a reputation for being one of the best places that you can study public health if you want to be properly prepared for a job in the workplace and it's certainly going to get a reputation before you know it as the place that people that are employing public health graduates look to for very strong workforce candidates. You can do it full time over one year or do it as a part time program over two years. Highly recommended, definitely check it out, I'm going to put a link in the description below. Okay, let's get on with this video. In these two groups, the crude mortality rate in married men is 0 0.017 or 17 deaths per thousand population, which seems to be about double the crude mortality rate of single men, which is at eight deaths per thousand population. So before adjusting for age, it looks as if single men are much healthier than married men. Huh, let's take a look if that's actually true once we've adjusted for age. In every single age band, single men have a higher mortality rate than married men. And the reason for the overall lower crude mortality rate is of course that the age structure of single men is very different than for married men, right? There's a lot of single men who are young where the mortality rate is low, and there's a lot of married men who are older where the mortality rate is higher. So for example, in the over 75s, despite the fact that single men have a mortality rate three times higher than married men, because so many of the over 75s are married, the actual number of deaths amongst married men in that group is much higher. And again, the age structure is a confounding factor. So let's look at how to control for it. In direct age standardization, we're gonna say, look, let's imagine that both groups have got exactly the same age structure, right? So we're gonna take out the age structure that we've got and we're gonna pop in a standard age structure. And by doing that, we're controlling for age. Age structure can't possibly influence the comparison because both groups are gonna have the same age structure, right? We could use any standard age structure for this and drop it into the two tables, that would be fine. But in this case, we can, what we're gonna simply do is we're gonna add up the two groups that we've got, add them together, because if you've got single men and married men, all together, they make up all men in the population and that becomes our standard population and we're gonna use that age structure. Now we're gonna take that standard population structure and we're gonna drop it into both tables, right, for single men and married men and calculate the number of deaths that we would expect. Right, so we drop it into the single men table and we calculate the number of deaths that you'd expect and we drop it in the standard population into the married men table and of course we calculate the number of deaths that we'd expect in that group and then we add them up and we get a total number of expected deaths in both groups, right? Now, remember that mortality rate is deaths divided by population and so of course now we've got ourselves, voila, an age-adjusted mortality rate in each group that can be compared. Isn't that amazing? So single men have an age-adjusted mortality rate of more than double that of married men. Stay and watch another video subscribe to this channel if you haven't already hit the bell notification to get notifications of future videos in the future consider becoming a member of the channel i create members only videos about jobs in the global health space and the public health space and for more teaching videos go to learnmore365.com thanks for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it i hope that was useful don't do drugs always do your best don't ever change speak to you soon see you here again in the near future bye